Why? Hello and welcome everybody. Also, good morning. I just woke up. So today I wanted to go ahead and make a video that I kind of made last league, which is talking about like sort of like your gear progression and your itemization as an RF jug. Last league we did it for Inquisitor. So the purpose of this video is not necessarily to show my gear or how I've crafted it as I have videos for that already. Uh, you know, same thing with the website and the POB. But instead, more so going to give you like an idea of how I evaluate a piece of gear in each slot, right? So with that being said, before we get started, let's go run a quick tier 16 map uh, and then we'll get right into talking about the gear. I do have to say this Oriath's end flask is like the pinnacle reason for me to play softcore <laughs> right now. It's I don't know. It's so beautiful. It's it's amazing. The fact that you can go explode without having to like deviate your tree or go avatar of fire use a cluster jewel i don't know it's pretty crazy also like shatter freezing on an rf is just such a it's such a weird concept i still can't get over it Hello, Expedition. How you doing, bud? See you later. Alright, map should be cleared. Nice. Alright, so let's talk about gear, shall we? So, I guess I'm going to try to put this somewhere around, like, entering maps and going into red maps. And I'm trying to get... I'll sort of try to give, like, two variants to each piece. So, talking about a weapon... Now, I think my weapon is a perfect example of this, and the reason why is my weapon doesn't have plus one all spell skills, and it also doesn't have plus one gems. So why am I using it? Well, my weapon, if you look at the suffixes, give a total of 50% fire multiplier. 50% fire damage multiplier is such an obscene or insane amount of multi to acquire from one piece of gear. If we like open up our passive tree here, I'm sure we're all aware of like this section here, right? You get 10 fire multi and then breath of flames is 10 fire multi so this is 20 percent fire multi right and then say you take the fire mastery for 20 percent fire multi it's 40 percent fire multi meaning even this whole section right here does not match the multi if you look over here at like acrimony you get six and sixes which is 12 12 plus 15 that's what 27 that does not match the the amount at all then you can get the dot multi that's 37 but that's conditional right you can come over here and grab the Four and six, which is 10 multi plus the 12, that's what 22. And then if you take the mastery, which again, you can only take once. So you get the point. No matter what section you go to on the passive tree, there is no section with 50% direct multiplier. In fact, most of them only have around 20% multi, and then you have to take a mastery. So the more you get of something, the less value it kind of has. In this instance, multi is just hard to acquire in most situations. So that is why my weapon is valuable. Uh, as a quick example, if I were to take off my weapon, my RF has 751k tooltip. If I take it off, it goes down to 500k. And that is so, that's mainly from the multiplier. Now, granted, again, a plus one plus one weapon with crafted multi is most likely significantly better, but this is just what I landed on. Uh, and then, of course, the reason I'm using minion damage is just because minion damage is essentially exactly like fire damage. Um, so, essentially, that's just 68% increased damage, right? And then the damage over time is only because I could not craft fire damage. Um, so if you use the vendor recipe that I have on my website, which is like the plus one gem setup, it should be very comparable to this. Probably better, maybe not better for your righteous fire, but most definitely better for your uh, fire trap. And that reason is because I'm guessing it's just because of fire traps base damage. Fire trap seems to scale harder with plus to level of gems than your righteous fire. All right. Talking about the helmet, very controversial topic. So... There are many ways to go about the helmet, so let's talk about this. Um, so step one, before you even get any form of expensive helmet, I'm a big fan of doing uh, Betrayal, which is known as John here, this stuff. And by Hello? essentially unveiling our helmets from like any of these people, if you get a helmet unveil that's a prefix, then what it does is it unveils, or has a chance to unveil plus gems. However, because it's an unveil and not a craft, it will actually be plus two gems, and then you can still craft like life so before you actually get like a like an influence helmet 
This is a great way to get a starting helmet is just spam unveiling gear. And to do that, I like to take uh, this section right over here, known as bribery and effective leadership, mainly bribery. All right, so after you have like a standard plus two helm, and you can also do the same thing on gloves, but we'll get to those later. Um, next topic is like conch effect, more Ellie and burning, which is better? How do I get them? What do I do? So step one on the early league starts, I typically buy Essence of Horror and I use on Elder Helm 82 plus. The reasoning on Elder Helm is because Elder rolls burn and conch. Um, 82 plus is just as secure like the level 20 versions. It's not that big of a deal. This, however, is very expensive and is subject to inflation, among many other things. So if it gets way too expensive to buy Essences of War, like I believe this league, there are other methods. So if you go to Global 911, that's kind of our Righteous Fire Global channel. And there are people who advertise essentially buying an Awakener Orb, I think it's called now. I forgot if they changed it. And you're basically going to pull a... Um, I think it's either you pull... So Elder is Conch Effect? Yeah. So either you pull a uh, conch effect with trap and mine damage or you pull burn damage with trap and mine. I'm not sure which one would be better. So essentially the process of this is you're, you're buying a base helm, you're buying another base helm, and then you merge them together to get two desired mods. So this is pretty much guaranteed that you hit two. There's not really any RNG. The only RNG that is involved with this is that you may have a six property helmet that has like one life, seven armor, etc. But still, it's a usable helmet right off the bat. That one I don't talk about because it is complex. People are going to screw it up. It's not really beginner friendly just because PoE's crafting system is not really very intuitive. But it is still a good method. Uh, if you're playing SSF and or you just started, whenever you kill influence bosses now, like influence guardians, they drop a ton of rares. So you can also just pick up helmets and identify and get conk and burn and use it right away. Conk and Burn is still very, very strong. Um, other than that, the only other thing I could really think of is you can buy ones with Conk and Burn. Another strategy, which is not necessarily entry level, is if you have a helmet that, say you're using Essence of Horror, and you have 30% more Ellie and 20 Burn, but your prefixes are bad, like you didn't get Conk Effect, you can actually gamble your helmet, and you can do uh, suffixes cannot be changed for two Divines, and then you can use a Veiled Chaos. And what that does is that will re-roll your, your prefixes while maintaining your suffixes, and then you have a chance, like before, of unveiling natural plus two AoE and then crafting life. So then you would have a 30% more Ellie, 20 burning, plus two level of gems with AoE, life. So a lot of variance in how you get your helmet. In the end, they're all going to be pretty similar, and our Lord and Savior Path of Building will carry you through that. All right, shield options. So... If you're in Trade League, you can go with this simple simple strategy here. Uh, Rise of the Phoenix into Dawnbreaker. Above 40k armor, switch to Saffle's Frame. Why? Well, Rise of the Phoenix is very good in the early game. You never have to use it ever. It just gives you an abundance of fire res, um, maximum fire res, and life regen. Those are things that newer players seem to struggle with, is maintaining your own Righteous Fire. So Rise of the Phoenix can carry you for a few levels. Then your inevitable switch to Dawnbreaker... Dawnbreaker is like a 2,000 armor shield. Uh, the reason why you want to use Dawnbreaker is it also converts percentages of lightning and cold damage to fire. As we all know in our Righteous Fire build, uh, we are running a Ruby Flask, which is 20% less fire damage taken. That means that the converted damage that is hitting your fire is actually doing less because of this Ruby Flask. Not to mention a special interaction kicks in here. Uh, also, let's not forget that we will naturally have higher max fire res just because of our pathing on the tree with barbarism and max fire res here. So talking about juggernaut, when you convert damage, what happens is if we just use one damage type here, say our Dawnbreaker says 15% of physical damage, or sorry, of cold damage taken as fire. So that means 85% is hitting my cold. So because I'm not taking 100% of cold anymore, the hit of the cold damage is lowered. Why is that important? That's lowered, uh, that's important, sorry, because Unbreakable makes it so 8% of armor applies to fire, cold, and lightning damage. The smaller the hit, the stronger your armor. Not to mention, the other part is um, that 15% that goes to fire is also rolling against your armor because it's not all one damage type anymore. If you split damage to fire, cold, and lightning, and you take fire, cold, and lightning on the same hit, your armor is individually rolling against 
fire, cold, and lightning because of unbreakable, which makes unbreakable incredibly strong, especially with conversion and for mapping in general. What did this guy even say? I don't really know. POB boys. Okay, um, then the reason you want to go from Dawnbreaker to Saffle's Frame is because once you get around 40 to 50,000 armor or so without your flask, so like if you look at me, I'm sitting at 55k, uh, it's better in my opinion to stop trying to scale crazy armor. You're still going to scale armor, but not necessarily in your shield slot. Instead, you'll go with Saffle's Frame, which gives 4 max res, which typically beats the conversion at that point. And more importantly, I know this seems kind of a meme, it gives like a shit ton of Ellie res, which is really good if you're using an Immortal Flesh that is minusing your res. So by using the Saffle's Frame, uh, you get a ton of res. And the last one, whenever you drop Malevolence, which is, well, technically you're not dropping it. When you drop Skitterbot to get Malevolence and then you get Skitterbot back again, uh, you'll also try to incorporate Tempest Shield. So for example, between my Saffle's Frame and my Tempest Shield, I actually have 50 spell block. The reason I have 58 is I also found this, uh, this, uh, how do I even look at this thing? I, cannot do this. I found uh, this right here. So this also has 8% spell block on it, a sanctified relic. So I have 58 natural spell block um, and shock prolif. That doesn't really matter though. All right, uh, next up, amulet. Amulet, in my opinion, is a very big spot for damage on a righteous fire build. So your amulet, oh, I guess before we go over there, if you decide to use a rare shield, I would just go with something with two max all res and then insert whatever stats happen to roll, reduce crit damage taken, high armor, high life, uh, life regen, etc. Amulet is a very big purpose for uh, for damage. So amulets can roll dot multi, uh, they can roll plus gems, they can roll plus the level of all spell skills, which is the same as plus gems, but better basically. Um, and then your anoint is very important. So part of why I put emphasis on getting a good amulet is two reasons. Number one, because damage. Number two, because if you can secure a good amulet, you can start to pivot into the higher damage variant, which includes Skitterbot. And the reasoning for this is you need to anoint Charisma to get this swap going, like on a, let's call it a budget. Um, and Charisma is two golden oils, which is already necessarily like not budget. So the, the faster you can secure a, a really good amulet, the faster you can warrant anointing Charisma and you start getting your damage online. Um, <clears throat> for a more entry-level amulet, I would just honestly stack a shit ton of dex and int. Uh, in the early game, it's mainly dex, so, you know, you can get, like, a jade amulet with, like, 30 dexterity or 50 dexterity with an all-attributes roll. Uh, so, there's nothing wrong with stacking a ton of attributes on your amulet. And then in the early game, I typically always annoyed arsonist. So, going over your rings. So, rings, I'm a big fan of one thing at the early game. Chaos resist. Chaos, Chaos, Chaos Resist. Um, the second thing that I would want to aim for is a minimum Frenzy Ring. So this also ties in hand with Betrayal like I was talking about through Unveiling. Minimum Frenzy Rings are so good for clear because one Frenzy Charge equals 4% more damage if we look at the charges here. Uh, frenzy Charges also give you uh, attack speed, so 4% attack speed per. Faster attack speed means faster shield charge. Faster shield charge means faster clear, right? So rings, I'm a huge, huge fan on a minimum frenzy ring. Now, after you've secured a minimum frenzy ring, or maybe you don't want to use a minimum frenzy ring, what is the next step? Well, going into the more expensive variant, you'll have something kind of like this, where essentially I have a 15% dot multi roll with a fractured chaos res, a lightning res roll, it's got a life roll, and then I crafted increased damage. So again, going back to our dot multi, when there's not many sources of dot multi that we can get, when we can trade a resistance suffix, now think about that, what I just said, a resistance suffix for dot multi, that's huge. Resistance, Saffle's Frame. Saffle's Frame is technically giving us damage because it's giving us 30 all res, well, 34, so 369, that's 102 Ellie res from my Saffle's Frame currently, which is allowing me to drop two affixes, so two suffixes on my ring. One of them is being dropped, for 15% dot multi. And the other one is being dropped for minimum frenzy. So you could directly look at Saffle's frame as a way to increase your damage because you're you're basically pulling out of res to gain more damage in that slot. This is something I've been trying to teach people for a long time and it can be really hard to understand because you're like, wait, how does fire res or lightning res give me damage? That doesn't make sense, right? I get a lot of people that are like, hey man, I have, you know, 214 all res 
and I'm still running Purity of Elements, can I drop this? <laughs> I'm like, no, you cannot. You need to secure your ailment immune. You need to start pivoting to like more aggressive gearing. And this is kind of what I mean, right? Now you don't have to use this as an example because these are expensive, but you could apply this to a number of things in general in your gear, right? All right, going over the body armor. So my body armor is actually like a really bad example, which also is good. So as Juggernaut Unbreakable, Unbreakable gives us double body armor. What does this mean? This means armor on our body armor is more in like it's more important than basically any other stat. So I am not doing my body armor justice because I have T3 flat, uh, T4 percent and T2 life. The life is OK, but the T3, T4 are not really very good. The main reason I'm using my body armor is because at my current armor value, when I'm mapping, I don't really die. So instead, I pivoted more to chaos resistance. Uh, and that's just because chaos is such a pain in the ass. Uh, I don't really want to die due to chaos damage, so I have instead favored to go with a chest piece like this. If I take my chest piece off, my chaos res is 39%, I now have to rely on a amethyst flask, and I don't really want to drop any of my flasks right now. I really enjoy my quartz for kind of like the juicing that I'm doing, so that is why I've pivoted towards using a chest piece like this. In the early stages of the game, it's totally fine to use an armor ES base. If you're hardcore, don't do that, but in softcore, it's totally fine it's significantly easier to get these colors. If you're trying to color up your armor chest with these off colors, you're pretty much going to go for three off color, either by using Verici's Bench for one blue or manually chroming. If you happen to hit reduced um, attribute requirements, that's also fantastic during the coloring phase. Uh, and then when you get your three off colors, so either that is uh, blue, blue, green or blue, 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 you want to go ahead and Hello. Make sure your Verici is located in your research here, and then you can go run the safe house, and then he has a chance of turning your sockets white, and you want to turn a red socket white. All right, almost done. Let's condense this. So, uh, going over your boots. So, if you're Trade League, you are getting Legacy of Fury. Legacy of Fury. The rolls in your Legacy of Fury is not really that important. I believe if you have over 40% Scorch, you get another 1% minus res. Not a big deal for people who are just learning. Um... If you cannot afford Legacy of Fury, what I recommend you do is just get like life res boots. Um, although personally, what I prefer more is trying to not have resistance on my boots with the exception of chaos res. And I instead try to get like life, life regen, percentage life regen. And the reason why is when you eventually get your Legacy of Fury, they have no resistance on them. It's an easy swap to just pull out from, right? Another benefit of Legacy of Fury, since you can get them so easily, I guess, in a trade league, enchant those bad boys, get that 2% life regen, double corrupt them so you can get a plus one max endurance charge. That's really good for Jug. I'm just kind of lazy. All right, gloves. If there is one thing in this build that is more important than your amulet, it's your gloves. And let's talk about why. All right. So as you can see here, I crafted them. You can tell because it's fractured chaos res. Uh, so what I did is I spammed minion damage essences. You do not have to do that. This is again more of like a soft core strat to pivot for damage. So I have tier one chaos res with tier one flat life regen with tier two percent regen. That flat life flat life regen is not super important. The tier two percentage regen is extremely important though. That percentage regeneration scales basically everything in the build. All of your flat regen you get from Immortal Flesh, the flat on my amulet, the flat on my body armor, the flat from my vitality, that all scales with that 19% that regeneration, right? That's essentially a multiplier to all of your flat. And I think it also, I'm pretty sure it scales with percentage regen, so in general, you don't ever want to lose out on this stat. Uh, then furthermore, for your prefixes, you want to make sure you're getting something similar to like, basically just like life. Life and armor would be nice. If you have a prefix open and you have a life roll already, crafting plus one gems is not bad. Remember, in the early game, you could move your RF or your fire trap here. In the more later stages of the game, you can stick your auras in here. Uh, this is good because like your determination gets plus one. If your malevolence is 21 and you put it in your gloves and it goes to 22, you actually get 1% more damage over time. And then essentially just my vitality is in there as well. However, there's another really important part, and I forgot about this. I'll talk about it on the boots as well. So the reason you want to get good gloves is so you can start investing currency into rolling your implicits. Getting fire exposure is a big damage boost. 
It's basically like using a miniature flammability without anything, any button presses because it applies on hit. So when we use our like frost blink on a target or throw a fire trap or shield charge him in the face, it applies that fire exposure. Although shield charge has to roll accuracy. Um, then for your other one, you pretty much want to try to get fire multi. This one is not as important, but it's still very important as we don't have many sources of fire multi. Now remember, because of the way GGG is, for some reason we can roll while a unique enemy is in your presence, while a pinnacle boss is in your presence, and just general fire multi, I would try to avoid pinnacle and just go for unique or the other one, so pretty much whatever rolls, rolls. Also, whenever you get that fire multi located there, don't forget you have the ability to, for example, take A, the uh, fire multi here, and or you can use the increased effect, not fire multi, the minus res. The exposure is minus 18, or you can use the 40% effect of non-damaging elements for your legacy, um, and then you can also take a minus five that I still have to take here. Uh, I've just kind of gotten lazy, but that minus five exposure is very good for your gloves here. All right. Uh, right. So on the boots, before you have Legacy of Fury, you can also use your Eldritch Currency on a good pair of boots to try to get uh, drop Scorch Ground. So dropping Scorch Ground in SSF specifically uh, is really good because it's minusing targets res. Uh, and it's basically your main way of applying Scorch pre-Legacy of Fury. All right, the last one, the belt. All right, uh, if you're Trade League, you buy an Immortal Flesh. Uh, that's pretty much it. Hope you guys had a wonderful time. Thanks for watching the video. Uh, anyway, no, uh, real talk aside, the reasoning for Immortal Flesh is because the armor value it gives is actually incredible while also giving a redonkulous amount of life regen. So if you look here, I have like 1.8K and it goes to like 2.3K. I don't even have that amazing of a role in my immortal flesh in fact it's actually like under average that's how crazy immortal flesh is uh if you really want to commit to immortal flesh as well you can throw 20 fertile catalysts on it but that's pretty expensive if you're trying to pivot off an immortal flesh or you don't have one uh, what i like doing is trying to get a belt with chaos res and life regen and armor those are like the three main ones chaos res lat regeneration and armor and then of course life is kind of naturally on there uh, if you get it on a Stygian Vice, even better, you get an Abyssal Socket. Uh, that jewel can be used for a number of filler stats, dex, spell damage while holding a, or sorry, damage over time while holding a shield. Um, what else is there that you can get? You can get, uh, I, just, I think you can get Chaos Res. There's not like a lot of damage you can get on the Abyssal Jewel, but you can get a lot of like fluff stats. You can get life. So it's, it's pretty nice overall. Uh, and then if you're trying to pivot into one better than Immortal Flesh, that's typically going to be like, an Elder Influence Stygian Vice that has like, I don't know, some ridiculous life stats. So you can get like 120 life, percentage max life, life regeneration suff sorry, life recovery suffix with um, flat life regeneration. You really want to try to get an armor roll as well because having a ridiculous amount of life regen does not protect you against a one shot, right? Anyway, that's pretty much about it. I'm not really going to talk about flasks as I feel they're very self-explanatory. The guide really explains that a lot. Um, so, yep, that's pretty much about it. I hope this video helped you guys out. Sorry if it was an information overload. If somebody wants to timestamp it, I will gladly throw those into the description. But it's time for me to go live. So I'm going to catch you guys all later. Hope you guys are enjoying uh, the league. Anyway, see you guys all later. And thanks for watching.